Hello, this is Cuckoo. I'm gonna take a look at this today, together with you. This is the OPZ by Teenage Engineering. It has a cool port on the side here. This is a USB Type-C port, and you can connect a bunch of different things to it. I'm gonna to try to connect as much as I can, ex explore what it can and can't do in this video. I can already reveal that it can play a keyboard if you connect it to this, no problem. But what else? What else? Uh, let's explore it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's turn it on. Uh, there we go. And the OPZ in all its glory. So let's connect something to it. The first thing that I think of that I want to try connect is a keyboard. These keys are small. They work fine, but they're small. So if you want to play freely, um, it's better to have a slightly bigger keyboard. So one such keyboard is this. This is called Keith Macmillan Q Nexus. Uh, Q Nexus is a slightly more advanced version of another one that looks almost exactly the same called keyboard. Keyboard is just a MIDI keyboard. Well, this has some uh, internal uh, sequencer and you can yeah, set some specific rules for how you, how you want it to work. This is what I have, so I'm gonna try it. So if we check the edge here, we can see that it's a USB type C to USB micro. So let's try to find a cable that does exactly that. Here is one such cable that's very convenient. So I'm gonna plug in the micro, the C, USB C over here, and then uh, USB micro over here. Doosh, and it just works. Cool. Yeah, this is very good. This is actually quite handy. I'd recommend perhaps the the, the keyboard instead of the QNexus uh, if you just want a, a little slightly bigger keyboard because um, the QNexus is a bit overkill for the for just a keyboard. Cool. Yeah, that's nice. Just work. And as you can see here, it says computer. So this is where we connected everything uh, through the computer. The, what this means is that the OPZ is acting the computer here. The OPZ has something called USB MIDI host. So it acts as a computer and it takes care of every USB class compliant driver free MIDI device through USB. Cool. So if you want a slightly bigger keyboard, you can use the Arturia key step. This is very nice. Uh, the keys here, let's see, yeah, the keys slightly bigger than small keyboards just a tad a hair bigger and that makes so much more room for playability in my opinion and the velocity is nice and uh, yeah overall very well built and for the OPZ it has like a dedicated spot there so as an OPZ keyboard it's really nice <laughs> okay so let's connect it see what happens There it's on. Now it's on. As you could hear, when I was playing the QNXs, it was playing drums. And now, even though I haven't changed anything on the OPZ, it's playing the melody. And what that means is that whatever MIDI channel that the keyboard is set to is the, the track that's gonna be played. So shift and one is the kick track. Shift and uh, 5 is the bass. And Shift and uh, 6 is the melody. So, all good. Uh, and also, if I play loosely, even the uh, velocity works. So let's try to record with the keyboards. I'm gonna say up front that there's some things that don't work 100% and, and this is stuff that will be uh, updated and corrected in future updates. So, so bear with me, I'm just gonna show you right now what works and what it doesn't work as well. So first of all, I wanna do this. Press the trig, let's see, we're on this track. 
press the trig. Yeah? If I want to correct a track or a note, it, it doesn't really work. And when you try to correct it that way, uh, it will stop working for new notes as well. As you can see that, in order to break that curse, we have to manually go in there and then So consider this a little bug report. This is a bug. It will be fixed in, in the near future. Yeah. So the basic functionality works fine. How about this mode where you build up a sequence by just holding rec? Yeah, no problem there. No problem. I'm going to erase that. And uh, how about live recording? I have the metronome already, so I'm going to just hit rec and play and play. Yeah. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that even though stuff is playing at full uh, um, polyphony, Sometimes you can lay your stuff on top of that. So the, the polyphonic distribution is actually quite generous on, on the OPZ. Uh, like this track, it has got three poly, but I think actually, let's, let's see, let's see, yeah. Two, three. So that's three. Let's add one. Uh, let's add three. It's I could add three notes on top of those three that were uh, in the sequence, and it didn't even interrupt. That's uh, really generous, very generous. However, if I record those three, so... You could hear that they were actually cutting off the previous ones. So, so the internal MIDI engine is uh, having these rules, and then they allows for overdubbing, not overdubbing, but playing over. Yeah, this is really cool. And also because we can select the MIDI channel from the keyboard, uh, we don't even have to select the the actual um, track here. Okay, so let's record some sort of uh, chord group. Right now, the OPZ is set to focus on the music, tr on the melody track. Uh, I'm going to record on the melody track, but let's see. That's nice, okay. How about changing to the kick track here? Okay, and recorder. Yeah. And then let's go to the hi-hat. And record that. Okay. Yeah, and now I could go in here and correct it. Yeah. So this is uh, really nice. Um, you don't you don't need to operate this. Uh, for everything, you can do stuff from here as well, like change the input channel and, and record on that. That's really nice. And uh, another thing that I want to show you is the sync. Uh, right now, you can see there's a play button here. Nothing happens here. I'm going to pre press play here. Nothing happens here. 
Let's see if we can sync them up. Uh, on the back here, you can see this little information uh, square. Uh, internal USB MIDI sync in. Right now you can see these little uh, things are, are turn to the upright position which means it's now expecting sync coming in over MIDI. If we want sync to come in from USB we can change this little pins here to correspond with the layout there so now it's going to expect to be synced from USB. Okay so what happens if I press play now? It started to play right? So if, if this is now set to arpeggio and I set this to uh, the melody track maybe when I play this now the, the keyboard will be in arpeggio mode One really nice thing with the arpeggio on, on the key step is that it takes velocity into account. So if this one is low velocity, let's play it, and the next one is high velocity, takes that into account. So you can make stuff a bit more lively. So now I can effectively play any track as an arpeggio, not just the arpeggio track, which is following the OP1, OPZ uh, um, arpeggio uh, system. So yeah, that's nice. Okay, let's try something else, shall we? Another thing that I think is really cool is the idea of controlling it with um, a control surface. Now let me show you. How about controlling it with something like this? Uh, the Launch Control XL by Innovation. This is a very nice control surface that the sliders here, they offer a very smooth and nice resistance so it doesn't feel very fiddly or plasticky. You can make really smooth and nice movements. And, and, the, and these two, and they have a very distinct middle point as well. This is a very nice sturdy um, yeah sturdy control surface. I've had a few from different brands and many of them have broken uh, because of touring but this one I've been touring with this a, a lot and this is much more sturdy than most other like very small and um, lightweight stuff. It's very nice. Cool so how do we connect that? Well that's take a look at the connectors again. All right, so we can see we've got this uh, so-called printer port. Uh, what's it called again? USB, uh, cool. Let's see if we can find a cable for that. All right, here is such a cable. So USB-C to uh, this one. So let's see what happens. So uh, there you go. And plug it in. Yeah, as you can see, it booted fine, and now it's on. Okay, so it, it seems to be working, but I, I'm cheating a little bit because I, I made um, a specific setting I'm going to show you. In fact, if you go to the factory setting and start fiddling with stuff, it's not going to work uh, because it's not sending the, the right CC messages that this expects. So let's have a look in the computer and see what this expects in order to make it work. Okay. All right. So in the manual, you navigate to the MIDI chapter, which is chapter 19. And we uh, scroll down to, yeah, right about here. Incoming MIDI table. So this is where you can read what the the MIDI uh, implementation looked like. So we can see parameter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, 
so every parameter on the synth can be controlled over MIDI and this is how um, parameters uh, are controlled by CC messages on tracks so every track has the exact same setting the only thing you do is change the MIDI track so uh, CC messages message 1, 2, 3 and 4 they are parameter 1, 2, 3 and 4 on the first page parameter 1, parameter 2 filter cutoff, filter resonance on the next page um, which is the green page is the next one 5, 6, 7, 8 envelopes and the next page the purple one is LFO and then FX and so forth so you can read everything here so what we need to do is to set up the uh, Novation launch control to um, to send the exact same stuff I've done it already I'm going to show you what it looks like here okay so this is the editor it's very simple to uh, to navigate you just yeah, type in the messages really so the first thing I've created here is to if I press this faders I can select what CC message and what channel they're going to um, control. Okay, track number one is controlling CC mes message number 16, which is the volume. If we go back to, um, oh, to this, we can see volume here. CC message number 16 is volume. Yeah. So MIDI channel number one. I want this one to control number one, channel number one, CC message 16, volume. Uh, I want the minimum value to be zero and maximum value to be 127. This way I can go all the range. But if I want to ensure that I never go above, say, uh, 110 or something like that, uh, I can set a, a maximum value here. I can say that, well, even though if I pull this all the way up, I never want you to go all the way. That's a, a way to kind of uh, put a safe zone. Uh, yeah. What what else? These knobs. This knob. The first four. These are uh, the uh, the the percussion, right? These are samples. So I want to have different settings for the samples than for the uh, for the synth on the samples. I want this knob to be CC number one, which means uh, pitch. Parameter one on the samples uh, is changing the pitch. So that is something I find funny. <laughs> uh, the next one, so this is like one channel. The next one I've set to send CC message number three, which is filter cutoff. The next one the top one I've set to um, and this is a bit different I've set it to send CC message number one on track 11 now track 11 is the tape track I wanted to to make some tape tricks with uh, with a controller so this is actually changing the speed of the tape and as you can see here I've set a different uh, maximum level there to um, yeah, kind of fine tune a bit, and this one I've set this to be. Um, well, I'm going all all over the place now, but basically the layouts I have decided um, that I wanted to use is volume, filter, and special. So on the samples, I'm using pitch and filter. On the synths, I'm I'm doing resonance and filter. And on these first two, it's tape speed uh, extreme, which is parameter one. And this is the uh, more moderate tape speed adjust, which is uh, parameter two. And down here, I've done something with the tape. So with these buttons, I'm setting, I'm playing different tape positions. Like I, I've got four different positions. And I can see here what, what the actual note is that I want to play. So I'm going with, F2, F, octave 2 on meter channel eight, uh, 11, which is the, the, the tape. And uh, C3, which is uh, uh, around there. And then the next one is G3, 
and the last one is F no E four. So I, I positioned four notes out for the sound buffer to to play in the tape mode. Yeah, to make stuff like this. And depending and another thing that I like to do with tape is to change the the buffer length longer longer short yeah so with these buttons I've set them to uh, to play these notes to kind of change these yeah and uh, yeah and then it's you know up to you to to just keep doing stuff that makes sense to you the way you want to perform perhaps you want to have control of the filters or perhaps you want to play around with the master effects uh, so what you do in the end is to connect it to the computer and and just say uh, save onto the device and, and plug it in here again cool let's try it okay so i've stored this on user number two user slot number two okay so let's hear it press play right and now immediately a problem arose i wanted to, to get this point really quickly when i was doing this on the cc message number one for uh, 11 or whatever it was we immediately realized that wow something it just stopped working somehow and then we see it's on the factory preset now even though i specifically said it to be here and this is because this is transmitting midi here and then this is actually sending back a midi here so what i want to do now is to just momentarily turn off midi uh, here let's see we could do that how do we do that how do we do it well, with the app. So this is what you do. Go to the app, you press this button here, which is the Bluetooth button. You scan, you press connect and uh, connect. Okay, uh, and like so, we're not connected. And then I want to go down here and over to the MIDI setup. Uh, in the MIDI setup page, now it's connected. Um, we can see that, oh, in fact, we can change the CC message if, if we want to. <clears throat> yeah, my initial idea was to disable MIDI out completely. This can be done by unchecking MIDI out enable right here. This can also be edited in a text file on the OPZ when mounted as a disk on the computer. Instead, I wanted to try changing the conflicting CC message. If we find that some of these CC messages are uh, are are messing messing this up, we could change it. So let's try to do that. I'm gonna go to the tape track here, tape. So now we're in the tape track. And CC message one was somehow interfering with itself. It was actually starting to select presets. So what I'm gonna do here is on channel. I'm gonna change this. CC message here to 100. Okay, and then I'm gonna see if it's still uh, if it still messes up. So now let's try it again, and I'm gonna play it. No, it's it's good. Right, I realize now that I should actually, let's see if we're still connected, I'm not sure. No connection? Yeah, I should perhaps change the CC message uh, 100 on all the, all the tracks. Yeah, okay, let's do that. 100, I'm not sure what 100 is, it might be really important. So now I'll change it on all of them. Let's see if it solves it. Okay, so here's another track I made yesterday. All right, I'm gonna set this to get kick and bass, and then I'm gonna set this to medium position like that, and go. Hi-hat, two, three, and. 
snare and this yeah. the filters So yeah, so that works. Now, the next level, next level is uh, what if I want to use this and the keyboard at the same time? How do I do that? Um, uh, I need two USB ports, so I need a hub. Uh, so let's plug in a hub and see if it works. Some hubs work and some hubs don't work. Most hubs, in fact, don't work as of now in December 2018. Uh, but I know the team is working on it, and uh, they're gonna up, you know, upgrade the USB hub uh, compatibility over time. So more hubs will start working over time. But right now, the only one that they have come up to me and say that this is guaranteed to work is this Kingston Nucleum. It's it's not the best hub in the world because it doesn't have everything that I want, but it has two USB ports and it has power distribution. So let's plug in the power first. Power in here. Dish. So we're powering it. And we're, I'm gonna unplug this. I'm gonna plug in this. You know, this has some standard USB port instead of USB-C, so I can use standard cables as well. All right, let's see. Yeah, it works. Good, so that works. Now I'm gonna be cheeky here and try this uh, USB-C uh, into the USB-C port here and see if it works. I'm not sure it does, let's see. Um, there and it's powering on and there's a fancy animation but is it? it stops there so it's powered but it's not being recognized okay so that's a bummer a regular cable it's getting messy all right so my dream there didn't really work out. So you can see uh, there's currently a conflict or uh, it's not supporting more than one MIDI uh, device at the time, maybe. Uh, so it's prioritizing the first one that's getting connected or something like that. This is something that I'm sure uh, can be fixed and addressed in, uh, in a future firmware update. So let's disconnect this. And by the way, by the way, in the future, there will be a uh, you, you can see these Lego connections here. Inside the OPZ, you can open it and there's space for a module. The first module that's going to come out is going to be CV and MIDI. So when that comes out, it's going to be much simpler to connect to, uh, to external MIDI devices. But right now, uh, we're going to do it through USB. I don't have the, uh, the beta uh, module, I'm afraid, but uh, from what I'm seeing in the beta forum, it's uh, coming along quite nicely, and I, I, I considering it being in late beta, I think. So yeah, look for, forward to that. But right now, it's going to happen through USB. Okay, so for now, if we want to connect and sync a uh, pocket operator, how do we do that? Well, there's plenty of solutions for that, I, I guess. One solution is to, to where is it? 
one solution is to to use something like this this is called rk005 it's a very nice little usb midi host uh, usb client midi midi interface and uh, let's plug it in and see if it works this has a big usb port and a small one so which one goes into this well picture this being the computer and this the peripheral so that means the usb client is going into this so i'm going to plug this in here yeah so this is a midi interface this is now being dr driven mounted by the uh, opz so this is um yeah you can see it's flashing and stuff happens yeah. nice yeah so what if we now want this to sync with this there is actually a sync out on this one uh, which could be a little sync pulse uh, so let's get a sync cable so i'm gonna plug it in there and plug it in here and i'm gonna Ooh, we can already hear it can you hear it there we go so because we can hear this now it means that uh we're not in the right sync mode so i'm going to press rec and bpm that's another sync mode number three uh two sorry this is the right sync mode so now this is going to run in the same tempo so if i change the tempo here now going to follow that tempo it's still a little bit tricky to get them to start immediately at the same time uh, basically press play a little bit before you want it to play just a hair before you want it to play yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so now what I want to try out now is can I actually connect the keyboard here uh, through the regular keyboard, uh, MIDI, MIDI port. So let's do that. This is a regular MIDI cable. So MIDI out into MIDI in. Which one is in? Out, in. Yeah, so now we're back. We're back in business. So now I can play this with a keyboard. This is mounting the USB interface. And this is... Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Okay, another thing I, I'm wondering now, could I sequence um, an external synth now? Now, right now, everything, this is being powered by the, by the OPZ. What I'm gonna do now is connect this. This is a super tiny synthesizer called PL Square. And um, I'm gonna see if it, it's supposedly powering over MIDI, so, does it in fact have power left to also power this? Let's try it out. All right, so this is a MIDI cable going to this. Uh, uh, connect it to the sound, let's see. Yeah, we can hear that clicking sound. It's the sound it makes before it has a preset. <laughs> so let's see, um, it's... I'm gonna mute the kick drum channel um cool mute it hmm that's actually <laughs> okay. all right so that works <laughs> um if i want to play it from here hmm this would have to act as a midi through can that be done 
Uh, let me check. Okay, so um, USB MIDI interface. Uh, there we go. This is output stand alone through only, no through, always through. Okay, so now I'm setting it to also be MIDI through. Commit changes. All right, so now we changed this port to also of uh, MIDI through. <laughs> So yeah, that's great. This is going through MIDI into this MIDI interface. This port has been configured to also be MIDI through. And this is also able to sequence that port, which is cool. Yeah. So I could so in real time. Yeah. 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 this changing the preset? Oh, it's going into this crazy mode, yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, I'm gonna play it. This is actually half analog, half digital. Uh, yeah, and you can tell by the sound, it's got this a bit unstable character. All right, so let's uh, make this a longer track. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna mute the bass track here, and uh, just because this sounds so cool suddenly, you can also mute the kick track. So. All right, so um, I'm gonna record that and yeah. 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 Uh, but I'm not gonna mute it fully. I'm still gonna have the MIDI, which is where the shift button comes into play. Yeah. 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 This is so yeah. fat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. So, yeah. channel six here now. Okay, let's go on a little journey here. I want to try something. I'm not sure if it's going to work. But how about trying to somehow make this work anyway, even though it doesn't work over USB, perhaps I can solve it in MIDI. The keyboard, this, this, everything. I need a, a merger, a MIDI merger, and I also need a, another MIDI host. So let's try this. This is a MIDI host, it's Kenton, it's uh, very trustworthy, I've had it for many years, uh, it just works. So I'm going to plug this in now. Kenton, let's go. Boop, green, cool. So, and then this, there we go, and yeah, it's powering it up. Right, now, what I want to do is to, to introduce this little guy. MIDI Solutions Quadra Merge, taking MIDI in here and merged it and sense it out here, everything is connected. I want to take this MIDI and merge it. Okay, so what I've done now is this one is going into Canton in order to transform the USB MIDI into regular MIDI. This is going into the MIDI Solutions Quadra Merge, uh, and this is now also going into the Quadra Merge, and then these two combined are going into here. And we can also hear that there's an unwanted USB noise that somehow entered the, the mix. Yeah, it's not pretty, but there you go. This could be taken care of with uh, like an audio cleanser, something, I'm not sure what it's called actually, but uh, this can be dealt with. Okay, so let's see. How about volume? So this is the lead. Ooh, it works, isn't it? <laughs> All 
Okay, this is like the master. Needs a proper placement. All right. Yeah. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Um, I, I edited the whole video and I felt like there's got to be a better way of doing this. So I brought it up once again and tried to connect it again. Uh, instead of doing like extensive MIDI stuff, I thought maybe what if this can actually take a, a, a USB hub? So I connected the overhub into this and started to add like this, 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 and this. And everything gets recognized by this. Like, look at this. Yeah, got a signal there. It's coming to the OPZ. And this. Yeah. So it's been played by here. And even this, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this one, I haven't configured it, but when I'm pressing it, I can see that it's flashing accordingly here. So, so I think. You know, I sort of underestimated the power of this. This has a, uh, if you connect a hub like this, it actually recognizes every MIDI, uh, USB MIDI uh, device connected to that. So, so yeah, it's truly a remarkable little hub, this. This is, uh, yeah, solving everything. So, uh, yeah, sorry about making this come a bit late, but just wanted to add this, um, yeah. This uh, RK005, oh, it's upside down. There you go. Uh, retro kit. Uh, you are saving the day for a lot of musicians because you make really powerful, nifty solutions for uh, stuff like this. Yeah, cool. I think we'll uh, call it a day. And uh, I think what's cool with this is that you can connect stuff in in a way that you want. I was a bit disappointed that the USB hub situation isn't fully fully there yet, but I'm sure we'll uh, see improvements over time uh, where you can have more than one MIDI uh, device connected at, at a time, um, I hope. And also when the modules come out, it's gonna be all these uh, MIDI solutions is gonna be much, simpler because then you're just gonna plug in a midi cable here and then that's like the first gate out to it so we don't need a a midi uh, interface anymore i know it's been quite messy but i hope regardless of this i hope that you you got something out of this and uh yeah keep experimenting and i'm you know super stoked about this platform really it's not just a device it's more of a platform in my opinion where music can live and you can connect different things and sequence other things and also control this with in other ways like with this yeah yeah it's cool this is cuckoo if you like what i do here on the internet uh on youtube and the patch that i create and, and yeah, videos like this, jams and report, please consider uh, throwing in some donations at Patreon. Patreon is the place where where you can support many creators such as me and others and it works really well. You subscribe for with an amount that you set and how much you want to donate is totally up to you and you donate every time I come out with such a video like this. And if you don't want to subscribe anymore, you can just uh, opt out at any time. And if you subscribe, uh, first of all, you you help me to uh, to create this content more and more, which I'm doing full time. It's it's what I want to do, and it's what I'm doing now full time. And also, uh, you also get access to my packs and stuff. If you're not up to this monthly donation thing, uh, fully understand that. 
and I also got a web store where you can do uh, you can just buy the packs that you want you can also donate there if you want to do it uh, like a one-time donation if if you're into that and also got this t-shirt store where you can go and buy my t-shirts I'm gonna fill it up with more designs and I, I I've heard the request loud and clear there's gonna be some fancy cool cuckoo OPZ related t-shirts as well and uh, just gonna I made a number of different ideas for that but I'm not happy with the design yet so I'm gonna keep working on it until the design is fabulous <laughs> yeah um, that's it I guess yeah see you very soon again and I just want to take a little moment here and say thank you Music Raider for uh, nominating me for being the music tech personality of the year 2018 it meant a, a lot to me to even be on that list and furthermore thank you everyone that voted for me uh, wherever you are thank you so much um, there are so many people voting for me that uh, I won the award I'm now uh, the <laughs> the number one uh, music tech personality of the year 2018 which is insane thank you so much thank you I hope I'll meet every one of you out there when I'm traveling and uh, so I can thank you personally this means a lot to me so thanks uh, also I've uh, I've uh, started working with a booking agency called Beach Wall Management and they're currently laying out a tour for me starting with the United States of America because that's where according to YouTube that's where uh, I seem to have the most viewers so yeah give me shout outs in the comments of uh, where you want me to play and stuff and my management's going to read the comments and and uh, yeah be as specific as you want if you know like a good festival or a good venue put in the in the comment cool see you very soon again and in january i'm gonna run this annual thing called january one jam every day of january yeah peace out see you soon